Howdy y'all, welcome back. Today, we will be looking at a collection of the oldest images of the funiculars of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. These existed in the 19th century. A funicular essentially is a counterbalance system where two rather large carriages are attached to one another via a haulage cable, which is along a set series of track, usually along a steep incline. When one car ascends, the other car by nature descends, and vice versa. It appears, for all intents and purposes, this was a technology inherited in mass during the Industrial Revolution and all but forgotten by the rise of the automobile. The feature of synchronicity between the two carriages is what separates funiculars from inclined elevators, which use a single car. Never mind the physics of the funicular, it is pretty ingenious and yet somehow it's pretty easy for us to comprehend, but what makes the funicular so impressive is the sheer fact that we do not see them being utilized anymore. When is the last time you heard of a funicular being constructed in the 21st century? I'm not saying it doesn't occur, but it's not something that's often brought up in the mainstream architectural world. In the 19th century, however, funiculars were on the cutting edge of many cities newly developing plans for the future, and the operation of funiculars on the many steeply inclined or elevated cities of America made for the usage of funiculars becoming all too common before the turn of the 20th century. The best examples of this can be seen in Pittsburgh. We have at least 14 well-described, measured, and well-known funiculars which once served this great Pennsylvanian city. Official reports claim up to 17 of these funiculars once existed in Pittsburgh, including two which still operate today. One of these two is known as the Monongahela Incline, and it is the oldest continuously operating funicular in the United States, founded in 1870 by Prussian-born engineer John Andres. Essentially, and again, please take everything from the current narrative with a pinch of salt, as we're attempting to peel back the veil, not promote it, but we are told that Pittsburgh, and more specifically, the Mount Washington region of Pittsburgh, was first settled by German immigrants following years of indigenous occupation of that landscape. Mount Washington was a treacherous landscape, with only a nearly unreachable stretch of hillside which would allow for the construction of the new German neighborhood. The rest of Mount Washington was aptly known as Coal Hill to the residents, as the vast factories and the community who served the coal mines of Pittsburgh were located here. We're told the predominantly German settlers to Coal Hill remembered the intricate cable car trolley systems of their homeland and envisioned the same sort of lavishly designed trolleys to help them ascend and descend Coal Hill. The Prussian engineer I mentioned earlier quickly developed what is now the oldest public funicular in the United States. However, his funicular design, which the mainstream says was inspired by the cable cars of Europe, was actually more closely associated to other funiculars that had already been in private use throughout Pittsburgh. That's what I find to be so interesting, is how we're told that these ideas truly spread. Essentially, we don't know what private business or resident constructed the first funicular in Pittsburgh, which makes the narrative even more questionable, as we're told the original funiculars, the privately owned ones, are long gone. So much so, we don't even know which factories or private residents constructed them, but these original funiculars of whatever origin are said to have been the things that inspired the construction or founding of 17 massive public funicular systems which serve the greater parts of Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh being the former Star Fort Pitt, formerly Star Fort Duquesne. Now, that's all interesting, but what I found to be the real meat and potatoes here is, we're told many funiculars arose not only in Pittsburgh, but they had a brief resurgence across the world. Following the 1889 Johnstown flood, which occurred in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. The South Fork Dam completely failed, situated roughly 14 miles upstream from Johnstown. The resulting flood saw nearly 15 million cubic meters of water beset the small town, with waters rushing at speeds equivalent to the Mississippi Rapids. 
leveling Johnstown and causing the passing of over 2,200 souls. We're told very quickly after this major world event, many cities across the earth began to reassess their plans for a great flood, and many landed on the idea that a means to reach higher ground was needed, as one of the main issues with the Johnstown flood was the inability to get to higher ground. In Pittsburgh, as in many other major cities, one of the proposed resolutions to the unforeseen flooding issues that could occur with a major flooding event was the funicular, and funiculars were chosen as an efficient way to be able to more quickly evacuate the cities and to take the residents to higher ground. Besides the aspects of the funiculars that also worked for the benefit of the city on an everyday level. That is what we are told that is the current narrative. Essentially, Pittsburgh was interwoven with numerous funiculars, really, over one dozen of them could have been in operation at any given time in the late 1800s. But what's further, and this really blew my mind, is that Pittsburgh actually had multiple funiculars that were curved, or the tracks included turns, which I know, according to physics, would be possible, but it's so amazing, so fascinating to me, to picture these elevated tracks, essentially massive carriages on these elevated railways, basically operating in some instances over a half mile, without the use of any power at the track or carriage level. Basically just a series of pulleys, and the counterbalance of the other car. That allowed for these funiculars to make ease of the routes that were designed for them. It's an elevated cable railway, but one which operates on the principles of the old world, where two carriages must always be working in unison. The funicular was said to be far more efficient than standard railways, using barely any fuel to operate, and many of the funiculars became the preferred method of transport for the upper class elite of Pittsburgh, who moved to the elevated neighborhoods on the hills of the city. Yet, by the world wars, the funiculars fell out of use, and with the advancement of modern transportation, nearly every single funicular in America was torn down. But in good old Pittsburgh, two of the greatest pieces of engineering history still exist and still operate today. Could these immaculate designs truly have been residue? Could they have been something that was inherited from the old world?